Welcome to the .CMS Getting Started installation tutorial. The purpose of this video is to show just how fast it is to set up a .CMS instance on a Windows or Unix based system such as Mac or Linux. An instance can be set up in a matter of minutes and requires very little configuration. So let's get started by first downloading .CMS and then let's take a look at the .CMS installation documentation resources. The .CMS can be downloaded by going to Products and downloads. The zip file is the file that we're going to use to, for this particular installation on a Mac or Unix based system. So we'll get that download started while we're actually going to the documentation resources. The most important thing to know when getting started is where to find the installation documentation and what are the necessary software requirements in addition to .CMS for a successful installation. So here in the upper right hand corner of the .CMS website we're going to open up the documentation link in a new tab and take a look at the table of contents here and you'll notice the very first topic of the documentation is installation. So clicking on installation we can then go to a multi-platform install to show how to install the .CMS on a Unix based system such as Linux or Mac uh, OS X or Windows. This is an installation that works for all three. Now first there's some software requirements that obviously are going to be needed in order to install .CMS. .CMS is Java based so the first thing we're going to need is a Java JDK. We need a Java JDK that is 1.5 or higher that is what is currently supported by .CMS. The Java JDK can be downloaded from Oracle's website here under Java for Developers. .CMS recommends using the Java JDK 6 version since there have been some known issues with the Java 7 version that is just released. Coming here to previous releases and then clicking on J Java SE 6 here you can see the development kits and release versions for the Java 6 version. So it is recommended by .CMS that you use the latest Java 6 JDK. There's a few things that need to be set up for Java after it is installed. Make sure that Java Home is set and points to the root of the JDK install directory. And also make sure if you're on a Windows machine that you do not have any spaces in the Java Home uh, path. It is important to note that the .CMS Community Edition does not support other JVMs such as IBM, JNU, or JRocket Java. Of course we've already started the download of .CMS and we're going to be using the zip file for our installation on our, our Mac environment. The next thing that is needed is a database. .CMS supports Postgres and MySQL out of the box in the .CMS Community Edition. In the Enterprise Editions we also support Oracle or SQL Server. So any of those four databases are all supported. It just depends upon which uh, edition that you're using, but the, the free .CMS Community Edition use either Postgres or MySQL. We're going to be using Postgres for this example. Then after we install .CMS and we've already installed a database and Java, we're going to then just do a few configuration properties in the root XML and the server XML and set them up, point them to the database that uh, we create and set up some ports for our .CMS server and we'll start it up and uh, show you how easy it is to um, get a complete .CMS installation up and running and hit it through a website browser. Now there are a few important things to note on the Unix based system before we do get started uh, is that uh, you need to set permissions for the bin directory and also for the Tomcat uh, bin directory to enable the execution of commands there so these chmod commands will be necessary for a Unix based system like Linux or Mac OS X. There are also some database configuration requirements which can be found in the configuration administration and database configuration documentation which is can be found here. Here you can see that we've got the documentation for any special needs for any of the four databases we support. 
So here in the community edition in our Postgres um, SQL you know documentation here, you can see that we've got. Uh, small exception that Postgres does not support procedural languages out of the box. So to enable procedural languages we need to run the following command on the Postgres database before creating our .cms uh, database. So this one command is what we're going to run uh, before we actually set up our .cms database inside of Postgres. Also there is uh, .cms is currently supporting MySQL versions 5.1 or higher. Earlier depre deprecated versions of MySQL had known issues that affected some .CMS functionality but were corrected in the 5.1 version. Remember to set the DB variable and for lowercase table names. And here there's some setup in MySQL that you'll need to do to the etc myconf file before creating your .CMS DB and starting your server. This can be a one or two depending upon your impl implementation. You'd have to see your MySQL documentation. Microsoft SQL Server databases can run into issues with transaction locking. Make sure to run the following command on your DB before running .CMS or establishing any connections to your database. Make sure to replace .CMS below with the name of your own SQL Server database that you create. Your version of SQL Server will need to be at least 2005 or later. If you want to check to make sure that the SQL commands that you're running here have been executed successfully on your SQL Server database, simply run this select statement to check your settings. In Oracle, there are no known issues or special configurations so far that .CMS has encountered. Since I'm choosing Postgres for the database for this particular install on my Mac laptop, I'm just going to show you where the Postgres download documentation is. Postgres comes with a piece of software called PG Admin, which I'll show in this getting started tutorial. It's very, very easy to start up a new database, be able to run SQL commands inside of that database. Very, very easy and can be downloaded here from the Postgres website. For this particular installation, I'm using the Mac OS X version. Since we're using the Postgres database for this particular installation, and because Postgres does not support procedural languages out of the box, we need to run this command here that's included in the .CMS documentation on our Postgres database. So we come to command line here, and I'm just going to simply sudo as my Postgres user. and then run the following command to create or to enable procedural languages. Now that we've enabled procedural languages in Postgres, we can create our .CMS database. Once you've downloaded Postgres, simply open up PG Admin and create a new database for your new installation. I downloaded the .cms 1942 zip file, so it only makes sense to name my database the same with the same name. So that I'm sure that my installation matches the database. So here I've created my new database and I'm going to then change my root XML file to match the database configurations here that I've set up for Postgres. Here in the downloads area you can see that the latest .CMS 1942 version has now fully downloaded and is ready for install. I'm going to rename the parent directory to match the current version. Then I'm going to go into the uh, Tomcat, Conf, Catalina, localhost, and find the root XML file and reconfigure it. We can see by default that the root XML has been set up with a blank username from my Postgres DB and blank password. And by default, Postgres is the only configuration currently active, and the rest are for all the other DBs are commented out for Oracle and uh, SQL Server, which would require an enterprise edition. 
So I'm simply going to give the username for my Postgres database, my password for my user, give the URL for the database. Okay, so here you can see that I've set my, my URL for my database to my local Postgres database which I just made. And so they match in name and I've also set my generic admin user username and password inside of the root XML which now needs to be saved. By default the server XML is set up for port 80 but in a local installation such as a laptop to be able to investigate .cms or use it for a development environment the port may have conflicts with other software running on your laptop so you may want to use 8080 or another port so to avoid conflicts. And then save your server XML. Those are the only two configuration files that need to be touched inside of the .cms itself. The next thing that needs to be done is to run the permissions commands that are required in the installation documentation I mentioned earlier whenever you're working on a Mac OS X based version there's some commands that need to be run to set permissions so that the .sh commands are executable within those directories. So here I'm going to move my downloaded zip file and take it and move it to a, another directory other than my downloads directory. So here is our .cms 1942. Now I'm going to open up the terminal and execute those permissions modification commands found in the documentation. Once inside the directory where we've downloaded and installed that zip file, I'm going to run now the chmod command on the bin file, followed by the chmod command for the tomcat bin file. Now we're ready to start up the .cms, but before we do, it's important to take a look inside of that zip file and see how the beginning .cms tables and the starter actually ends up creating itself inside of the .cms. Where do those files come from? Well, here in the, in the zip file that we downloaded, we notice that there is a .cms directory here, and there is a starter.zip file. If the database is blank, whenever we start up the .cms, this starter.zip file will automatically be used to create all the beginning .cms tables and create all the starter assets that are needed in order to see that beginning .cms starter site that's provided with a lot of great examples for webmasters or developers to use and take a look at. We can now go back to the terminal and simply run the startup.sh command uh, from the bin directory of the .cms install. After that we will want to actually tail the tomcat log to see the startup which we can do with a simple tail command. The directory is not yet available it's being created so we'll simply try again and we can see that the community edition is now starting to execute the SQL and create all the tables the assets required for the starter site. And after a few minutes the .cms instance is now started up running on port 8080 so now we can try a back-end login through a website browser. And here we can see that we're actually viewing the .cms installation that we just started up so we can hit the all the pages in the starter site and see that it has started up successfully. So we can now log into the back end by doing a forward slash admin which will take us to the back end login. The username and password to log into the back end of the .cms is admin at .cms.com and admin. And now you can see we're logged in successfully to the back end of the .cms where we can see the starter site, we can see some other hosts that are included in the .cms starter site and we can examine content, create items on an event calendar, create forms, emails, uh, marketing campaigns, new structures for content and change this starter site or create a totally new site of your own. That's just how easy it is to get started with the .cms. We hope this 
getting started tutorial on .CMS installation it was helpful and that it has shown you how easy it is to set up in a matter of only a few minutes a successful .CMS install on a local machine and begin testing and using .CMS on your own. For more helpful videos and tutorial documentation, please see the .CMS Getting Started section of the .CMS documentation. From all of us at .CMS, thank you for watching.